Hello, now this is a video about gas masks obviously, and this one is going to be about don't overthink a gas mask if you're buying it for yourself or your family. Um, get something that is practical and dependable, but doesn't have lots of bells and whistles. So what do I mean by that? Well, I keep encountering more and more people in the YouTube comments who think that if a gas mask is to protect them, or a respirator or a protective mask, whichever terminology you want to use, is to protect them from any sort of chemical incident or anything like that, it has to have all these magical features on it that some masks have that cost loads of money um, and nothing else will do. And these are people who fundamentally, I guess, don't understand how a mask works. Um, so this sort of video is hopefully going to explain the features that you sort of want on a mask or need on a mask, features that would be nice and then features that as a civilian you really shouldn't be very concerned about whatsoever. So, let's start off with um, the actual mask itself. Obviously you're going to need a mask if you've decided that you want one, um, but you know you don't need anything too special with a mask. Now, what is the fundamental thing a mask needs to do? Protect you from poison gas or you know radiation, uh, like radioactive fallout you could be inhaling, or biological threats, whatever. The point of the mask is that it protects your respiratory system in your eyes, if it's a full face mask, from these threats. And it does that in a very simple way. The mask sits tight to your face, you have a filter on it, and obviously filters are important. This is an out-of-date filter because I just use this one as a prop in lots of videos, but you need a working in-date filter, preferably. Um, you know, so you have the filtered air go into the mask, the mask is airtight, and then you exhale. And obviously you need eyepieces on the mask so you can see out of it, so you're not, you know, blind when you've got the mask on. Um, and that's all you actually need uh, physically for a mask to work and for a mask to save your life it to be airtight, to be using a working filter, and so you can see out of it. I mean, you wouldn't even need to see out of it for it to save you, but I mean, it would be completely impractical to have a mask you put on and then you can't see. So, there's that. So what other features are nice on a mask if you've got them? A voice diaphragm, simply because when you're speaking, other people can hear you easier, you know. Having mm, 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 mm isn't very practical. Um, you know, if you've not got one of those. A drinking tube as well. Um, obviously this is where the canteen, the drinking tube, connects to the mask. Um, it's not a feature I don't, I think is really, really necessary. But you know, it's one of those things where you can stay hydrated easier if you have got the canteen system and everything that goes to the mask. But bear in mind, as I've ranted about several times before, some drinking tube systems are far better than others. Um, and there's some masks where I would not even attempt to use a drinking tube on them just because it's going to create more problems than it solves. But primarily that's all you need, you know, your intake, your outtake valve and a mask that works properly plus some other features. But what I see a lot is people who look at military masks, like very modern military masks, that have very specific features on that a certain nation probably wanted on the mask and then they think they need them as a civilian. Now, if you look at something like the venerable GP5, the world's most mass-produced civilian's gas mask, what does that do? It's got an intake and outtake valve, um, it's got a Tissot tube system to stop it fogging up, which is, you know, something it didn't need, but it had, and it's got its eyepieces. It's very, very simple, a GP5, but that's why the Soviet Union mass-produced it, because it would work well, you know, to giving to lots of civilians, so there's that, you know. But the thing I see is like where people say, well, I need these lenses on it, um, because, you know, plastic lenses on some of these masks aren't good enough, glass lenses on some of the masks aren't good enough. I need, like, really thick polycarbonate or some sort of ballistic shield thing that goes over the mask, so if I get shot in the face, it's not going to go through and get me. Uh, sorry, bad news for you, if you get shot in the face, I think you're dead, whatever. Uh, there's not going to be any sort of eyepieces on a conventional gas mask that are going to stop a rifle round. So, you know, why bother? Now, there are things like, the mask should be comfortable. I mean, if your life depends on it, I think you're going to put up with having an uncomfortable mask on your face for a while. But if the mask is, um, you know, like really uncomfortable, that's not great. So the more comfortable the mask, the better, because you want to feel good wearing it. As I've said before, um, you know, there's some masks that might make people feel more claustrophobic than others. So avoid those masks. Watch the video I did on that if you're interested more about the masks I talked about in that video. But, you know, there's lots of features like that that may be important. But then there's features that, like I was saying, uh, about the... Um, you know, like, tactical lenses that stop stuff coming through. It doesn't matter to you as a civilian, it really doesn't. Um, as long as they're not going to break easily from, like, an accidental impact, it doesn't matter. Um, then you've got, what the some of the other things, because I thought of all these, of course, before I started filming, and now they've gone out of my head. Oh, voice projection, this is it. So, 
A, fi a system like this is absolutely fine for other people hearing you. Let me just demonstrate it if you're unsure. But if I put this mask on, and then I speak, I just get it tight, so obviously... So, you can probably hear me speaking fine now. The voice projection on these masks is good enough with its voice diaphragm. That's all you need. So, what am I getting at by voice projection? The people who think you need massive electric voice boxes stuck onto your mask as well because oh, somebody can't hear me if I use my regular voice. I need like a megaphone strapped to my mask for it to work. If it's got a good voice box, you don't need that. You don't need a megaphone when you talk to somebody in the same room as you normally, so why would you need it on your mask? It's only cutting your voice down by a little amount. So again, that's a pointless feature. Now, again, there are masks like the S10 that have a really good design feature in it that doesn't add any bulk to the mask which is that they had a secondary voice, small voice diaphragm on one side of the mask and that a radio microphone could clip to it. So if you had the radio system you could communicate very clearly with people who could potentially be miles away because you're all using a radio system that could uh, you know, connect directly to your respirator. Great design choice, you know, but you don't need a megaphone attached to it and I don't think most civilians would need a radio microphone system clipped onto their mask either. So hopefully you can see what I'm getting at with this. Um, and the problem is, like I said, a lot of people don't really know how to budget. And the thing I see a lot is where people are willing to spend loads of money on a mask, but no money on filters, which is the sort of complete opposite of what you want to be doing. You want to be spending enough on the mask that you can get a reliable, good mask you're happy to wear and everything like that, that does everything you need from it. But you need money so you can actually have enough filters to go around for you and your family or whatever else. It's no good spending, like I said, $300 on a mask, getting the mask and then say I've got no money left over for filters or maybe being able to get that mask and get one filter <clears throat> ideally you want to have a couple of spare filters that are sealed um, you know ready to go as well as a training filter like having this on there so you can get used to wearing the mask and using a filter and checking that your mask is airtight by using you know an expired filter and then when it comes to it you can whack your new filter on your mask and you're good to go as I said before, a mask being surplus and old doesn't mean it doesn't work. Obviously, as they get older, there's more chance of something going wrong with them. But masks don't magically fall apart once they're outside of their, you know, use date. Especially because as a civilian, you're not going to come into contact with as many threats as the military expect to be. That's why their masks need to be, you know, in a much, you know, better configuration. It's like I said before, buying the old Kevlar vest as well. You know, an old Kevlar vest is going to offer you as a civilian probably very adequate protection because you're not likely to be shot at anyway. So the vest is more of an insurance policy than it is something you might actually need to you know, risk your life on every day. Of course, get one that's in good condition, but you don't need to really worry about you know, lots of the things on it. So hopefully my video's been summarised well enough, and that's, you know, the... Yes, there's features that are important on the mask, but there's lots of features that aren't. If you're buying a mask as a civilian, um, just get something that's going to be comfortable and you're going to be happy to wear and it does the basics. You want something that does the basics very well then anything else is a bonus if it's at a sensible price. You do not need like night vision compatible respirators, voice projection box compatible respirators, radio system compatible respirators, you know all this sort of stuff. Now if you're in somewhere like America and you think there might be a chance that you need to shoot with a mask on then sure, get one that's a military mask that's designed so you can use it with rifles and things like that. That goes as standard, but again, most Milsurp masks are going to do that to some extent because they're military masks originally. You know, and again, do you want a mask that works for a helmet? Okay, yeah, find one that does that. But the point is most people don't need things like that if they're buying it as a civilian. And anything like that is a bonus. But it seems very strange to me people keep wanting to spend more and more and more to get masks that are very specialised at doing certain things and then it gets to the point where like I said some of these people don't seem to want to budget filters into it at all but they do want to budget the mask in where as I said before generally filters tend to be more expensive because if you're buying something that's in date made by a reputable company and sealed um, you know when I say in date I mean it's got a few years on the date it's not running out next month you know you're probably going to have to spend more money than you are for a, a mask nobody wants anymore that's still perfectly good but you know everybody else has moved on. So there you go, um, hopefully this video has made sense, it's sort of a bit of a rant video but it's just something that you know annoys me when you get people that try and argue. Like I said, I'm not an expert by any means but it's just, you know, 
I've got nearly 90 masks in my collection now, I should think. Uh, over 80 easily, and um, you know, so I think I know a fair bit about masks. Not saying I'm an expert, but you know, I know a fair bit about masks. And the majority of the masks I have would serve a normal civilian absolutely fine if they had to use it to escape from a contaminated area. Um, but yeah, like I said, you don't need all the bells and whistles. I like collecting them because I find them interesting. But <clears throat> please don't try and argue with me that you need um, certain features and you know for definite you need that feature, even though when I ask you, you can't tell me why you don't. You know, you need that feature. So there you go. Get a mask that you're happy to wear and that's comfortable, and then worry about everything else later on. You know, don't um, don't go for the most expensive bells and whistle mask and then say, oh no, I've got no money left over for filters, but that's okay. I've got a 30-year-old GP5 filter of asbestos in, I'm sure that will do for myself and my loved ones. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs>